Hello, and welcome to your first tour of a bioinformatics tool. We're going to start this class off by looking at information stored in databases. One of the ones that you're probably most familiar with is NCBI. NCBI is also home to PubMed, um, which you hopefully have used in all of your courses for literature searches. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at the other databases hosted on NCBI. We're going to start by typing in a gene name. Um, so we're going to look at the cystic fibrosis gene. Um, this is a well-studied gene, and it's interesting because it has a lot of different variants that are capable of causing the disease. When I click search for all databases, you'll see that books, PubMed articles come up under literature, but we have a lot of other resources on the NCBI tool that will show you exactly what is happening on the gene level, the genome level, um, interactions of this particular gene product with chemicals, the protein that the gene codes for, um, and also the relationship between this particular gene in humans and other organisms. One of the things that's really important for learning how to navigate around NCBI is to understand how all these things are related to each other. The one term that will appear in every single one of these records is what I typed in here. It's the gene name. Um, and so if you can find the gene name for what you're looking for, it will make your life a lot easier. If not, you're going to want to go to a secondary tool and find that gene name before you get started. So we know that CFTR is a gene. Let's go to the gene record to see what information there is about this particular gene. So when we click on the first search result that comes up, I knew ahead of time that I wanted to use all capital letters to have human be the gene that came up. Um, but you'll see if I did capital C, lowercase f, lowercase t, lowercase r, I would start to get some of these other organisms. Um, but human is what we are most interested in today. So this is the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator. It's part of the ATP binding cassette subfamily C, and we can look down and we can find out what it does. It codes for an ABC transporter, and part of that function of the protein is to be part of a chloride channel. When this protein is broken, it causes cystic fibrosis. Um, so now we want to look at where this gene is located. It's on chromosome 7, and we'll learn in this class to start to read the location a little bit um, more specifically than that. Um, so we can find out not just the chromosome, but actually the base pairs from this picture. Um, and you can also start to look at chromosomal location by what is the um, physical band that it's on. Is it on the P or the Q arm? Um, is it band 11, band 12? Those kind of things uh, are easy to find here. From the gene article, we can get to PubMed. From the gene article, we can get to different phenotypes. Um, you can look these up in MedGen, in OMIM, um, which you all used for genes and genomes to write a research paper. You can look up different variants and SNPs that are associated with disease or healthy states. Um, and you can look at all these different interactions. Let's use this gene, this gene-centered database, to go out to the other databases that are within NCBI. The first one I want you guys to look at, and you should follow, try to follow this along on your computer, is protein. Now you'll see that the one protein, one gene hypothesis that we talked about, like theoretically in genes and genomes, it's something that you can physically see here. Every gene that you look up will have more than one protein associated with it. But what we want to do for this first thing is, is look at a protein that is something that is a reference protein. And the way that we can tell if it's a reference protein is by this accession number. XP proteins are not reference proteins. Um, but if we scroll down, if we can find an NP protein, that will be something right here, NP, that is a reference protein. So this is something that is a known version of the protein encoded by the CFTR gene um, that has actually been looked at by more than one person. 
Another way that you can tell that this is a mature transcript, um, something that you know is can be really trusted, is this version number. So it says 0.3, um, something like EAW says 0.1, the XP protein that came up first in our search results says 0.1. 0.1 means it's version 1, 0.3 means it's version 3. So this is the third go around with trying to determine what the exact protein sequence is for this record. So we click on a record that we trust, and from the protein, we can get to a lot of databases that weren't directly accessible from the gene. Um, so we can now go to run BLAST um, and BLAST the protein amino acid sequence, not the genetic sequence. Um, we can identify conserved domains. These are not nucleotide domains. These are physical structures within the protein. Um, and my favorite, we can actually look at the physical structure. So if we click on 3D structure, you'll see um, this domain, this part of the protein comes up, um, and you'll also see the ability to look at some other related proteins. Um, so we can click on this, and you can see some things right away that are in this protein structure. Um, one of the things that's nice about the default view of the molecular graphic is that it highlights regions that are beta sheets with arrows and alpha helices um, with what I, I like to think of as sort of these crayon shapes. Um, and so that molecular graphic lets you picture exactly what the secondary structure is in your 3D protein. So those are the first three types of databases that we want to look at for bioinformatics. Gene, protein, and 3D structure. For your homework this week, you'll have to look at even more of the databases on NCBI. The thing to remember is that they're all accessible by clicking on the NCBI homepage. Um, you can specify which database you're looking for in the pull-down menu. And the search term that will get you to the right place is always going to be the gene name. All the databases on NCBI are gene-centered. Um, and knowing that will save you a lot of time and a lot of searching.